We're going to look at the technique called bootstrapping as a way to produce confidence intervals and we're going to start out with proportions. Now this is going to be a little bit of a long video so get some caffeine, stick a fork in your collar, whatever it takes to stay awake. But do stay awake because it's worth it. Your mind's going to be blown by the end of this thing. It's, uh, it's a pretty uh, amazing concept confidence intervals are. And we're going to take a look at this by looking at a cute puppy from puppywar.com and a cute kitty from kittenwar.com. Now, the question is, is who is cuter, Munchkin or Pino? And to simplify the problem, instead of giving people two choices, uh, we're going to make this a yes-no question. Is Munchkin cuter, yes or no? So if you think Munchkin is cuter, you would say yes. Otherwise, you would say no, in which case it would be the kitty. Let's imagine we're asking all Americans this question. Here is America. You can see all their little smiling faces going up and down the screen. We're going to ask them. But there's 300 million Americans. That's way too many. Um, so we're only going to ask a sample. We're only going to ask a few of them. So let's just say we get on the phone. We get our random digit dialer so it can randomly call different households. And we get 40 people to take our survey. And of those 40 people, it's kind of scattered around the country. It's all random. And we have some people who think Munchkin is cuter, the dog, and some people who vote for the kitty, uh, for Pino. And we get this mix, and our sample is only the people who responded. So there's some people we called, they didn't pick up, or they didn't want to participate, so be it. So we ignored them. Uh, and there's some people we didn't ask, but of all the people that we did ask that did respond, that forms our sample. And if we count them up, we had 24 that preferred Munchkin, and then the rest, uh, the 16 out of 40, that preferred the kitty, uh, Pino. And so 24 divided by 40, if we want to turn that into a proportion, a fraction, a, uh, a percent, we're going to turn that into 60%. 24 divided by 40 is 60%. So 60% of people in our sample prefer Munchkin. Now we have this question. How confident is that guess? Is that a good guess or a bad guess? How, how solid really is it? We wanted to know things about all Americans. We only asked 40 people. So it can't be amazingly solid, but hopefully it's OK. The real question is, is, is it a completely worthless guess? Is it exactly what the population thinks or somewhere in between? Now, it's probably not a totally worthless guess. So I'm going to cross that out because it was done in a statistically random fashion. We collected good data in a valid way. So, so there's probably some merit to it. On the other side, exactly what the whole population thinks? Yeah, definitely not. 40 people to predict exactly what everyone thinks? I don't think so. So we're probably sitting somewhere in the gray zone. And if all we had was our quick intuition of, well, how solid is our guess, we would always be in the gray. The beauty of statistics is that it lets us quantify which part of the gray zone we're in so that we can actually give a reasonable interval. So instead of 60%, we could say that we're positive. It's between 0 and 100%. There's no doubt in our minds it's between 0 and 100 well, that's pretty useless, so let's move on. How about we're very confident it's between 40 and 80%. We said our best guess in the middle was 60%, so if we tack on 20 above and 20 below, we could say very confident. Well, based on what, though? So there's really nothing to back this up, but it sounds reasonable. Or we can use the idea of confidence intervals, and we can say that we are exactly 95% confident not just very confident, let's give it a number. We're 95% confident that it's between some percent and some other percent. So we have to actually calculate what those things are. But we can get an exact uh, prediction that will be right 19 out of 20 times. Or we could make other intervals such as 99%, 90%. Really, however confident we want to be, we can find an interval for that amount of confidence. Now, Hang on, because what we're about to do is a little bit weird. It's a little strange. This is not something that you probably would have just thought of when you woke up in the morning. Our goal is to figure out how precise our guess really is. 
And the way that we do that is we imagine what most other guesses are going to look like. So our guess was 60%, but let's imagine that we took other samples and it was 59% the next time and 62% and 61%. If all of our guesses are really, really close, every time we take a new sample we get uh, estimates that are pretty close, we can make uh, a pretty small interval. Most of our guesses, most of our predictions are in a small interval. However, if uh, over here, one of our guesses was 60%, but then we took another sample and we estimated 51%, 47, 73, 64. All over the map here, uh, where it's a much wider interval, then we would have a wider confidence interval. The problem is, is that we are not going to take a whole bunch of samples. We sampled 40 people because that's all we felt was reasonable or all we could afford or all we had time for, uh, whatnot. So we're not just going to go take a bunch of samples of 40. So we're going to use a little cheater technique. We're going to take our sample that we originally had, condense it down, and we're going to replicate it. We're going to basically take our sample and copy-paste it a bajillion times so that it's now our population. So we're going to pretend that our sample, if you just multiply it over and over and over and over again, is the population of America. Now that seems like a little bit of a logical jump and it is, but what other information do we have? The sample, the information we have from sampling is the best guess we have of our population. So it's not unreasonable to take our sample data and copy and paste it over and over and call it our population. You see the word bootstrap in the middle there. The reason that this is a bootstrap population is because we are going to now take a sample randomly from this fake made up population. We took our sample, we copy pasted it a bunch of times, and now we're going to randomly sample from these people. So let's say we took a random sample of 40. We're always going to do the exact same size as the original sample, so we took 40 the first time, so our bootstrap sample is 40. And if we count it up, oh wow, it's a little bit different this time. And since there is hundreds and hundreds of the uh, uh, people who like the kitty more and hundreds and hundreds of people who like the puppy more in our copy-pasted population, it's totally possible that we're going to get different data. So the first time 2416, this time it was 20 and 20. And the trick is, is that we're just going to repeat this thousands and thousands and thousands of times. So I'm on this website called StatKey, and we're going to look at confidence intervals for a proportion because we're dealing with some proportion, some number of yeses out of uh, a total of 40 in this case from our samples. So we counted 24 people who like the puppy out of 40. I enter in this data, and I'll show you more about how to actually do this later, but this is just to get the general idea. And I'm going to randomly generate a sample, just like I did in the slides before, and look at this, I got 26 out of 40. So doing that uh, bootstrap population where it copy pasted the, pop the sample over and over again and drew randomly from it, it ended up getting a little bit higher than our original sample did. Let's do it again. 21, a little bit lower. 28, a little higher. And so you can keep doing this and it's going to be a little bit different every time but it's probably going to tend a little bit more towards the middle. And what's nice is I don't have to sit here clicking generate one sample at a time. I can do 10 at a time, or 100 at a time, or 1,000. And if I do a few thousand here, you can see a pretty clear pattern starting to emerge. Most of them end up near the middle, near our best guess. And that makes sense. Our sample is our best guess of the population, so most of them should tend towards the middle. But we get this weird trailing off effect on both sides, where it could be a little bit lower, it could be a little bit higher. And if I click this two tail button, we're going to see I can where the middle 95% of our guesses happen to fall. And in this case, it's between 0.45 and 0.75, or 45 and 75%. Our best guess is still 60% in the middle, but we now have this range of confidence to say it's probably somewhere between here and here 95% of the time.
So let's go back to how we're going to interpret this. Instead of saying that our guess is 60% of the population thinks that the puppy is cuter than the kitty, we're not going to say we're positive between 0 and 100. We're not going to say very confident. We're going to say that we are 95% confident that it's between 45 and 75%. And that was using that technique called bootstrapping. And the nice thing is, is the computer does all the heavy lifting for you. All you need to do is generate additional samples. Now, in context, let's figure out what this 95% confidence interval really means. We're 95% confident that the proportion of Americans, because remember, we sampled Americans, that think Munchkin is cuter than Pino, thinks the puppy is cuter than the kitty, is between 45 and 75%. There's a 1 in nine, or a one in 20 chance, a 5% chance, that this interval, which is really wide, is still wrong. It's possible that that interval is still wrong. But we're pretty confident, 19 out of 20 times we're going to be right when we say this statement here, that the real population thinks 45% to 75%. As a random side note, if you're wondering where this bootstrapping thing came from, there's this guy named Brad who came up with it. Um, so blame him, I'm just the messenger. Uh, the other technique that those of you looking to do AP stuff uh, might look into is the normal curve. And if you remember looking at that diagram, you kind of can see the bell curve, the normal curve in there. So it's very similar, but this technique allows you to deal with a more crazy population. So that's why it became a little bit more popular in recent years. The end.